When you slide a crate across the floor, you enter a force contest against friction. Friction arises from the interactions between the atoms that make up the crate and the atoms that make up the floor. If the floor is slick, the atoms play nicely with each other and you won't get a lot of friction. But if the floor is rough or sticky, the atoms slow each other down and you get a lot of friction. Friction actually comes in two varieties, static friction and kinetic friction. When you first start to move an object at rest, static friction tries to keep the atoms stuck together. So, friction will push backward with whatever amount of force you're pushing forward with. However, if you push hard enough, static friction will give out and the crate will begin to slide. This is because static friction has a maximum value at which the crate breaks free. This maximum value depends on two things, the stickiness between the atoms and the force between the crate and the floor. The stickiness is measured in a number called the coefficient of static friction, represented by the Greek letter mu. The force between the crate and the floor is called the normal force. If you're pushing horizontally and the floor is level, this normal force is the same as the weight of the crate. There are some cases in which the normal force is not the same as the weight. We'll take a look at this possibility in the next episode. Once you overcome the static friction force and the crate begins to move, kinetic friction takes over. The kinetic friction between the crate and the floor always has the same value, which also depends on the stickiness between the atoms and the normal force. This time, we use the coefficient of kinetic friction instead of the coefficient of static friction. In nearly all cases, the coefficient of kinetic friction is less than the coefficient of static friction, which means it's almost always easier to keep a crate in motion than it is to get it moving to begin with. To model friction in our code, we need to be able to tell the computer to behave differently based on whether the crate is moving or stationary. We can accomplish this goal by using an if block. This line marked with if will check for whether the crate has zero velocity. If so, then we need to use static friction. Otherwise, we need to use kinetic friction. The line marked with else means that the code will either perform lines 17 through 19 or perform line 21, but not both. In the case of static friction, we first calculate the maximum static friction that we can possibly have. Then we set the friction force equal to the maximum value or the force we're pushing with, whichever is less. Then we create a vector for the friction force. In the case of kinetic friction, we simply calculate the value of the kinetic friction and create a vector for the friction force. Either way, we end up with a vector for the friction force and combine it with the force that we're pushing with. Like in the previous episode, this pushing force will increase with time, starting with zero. That means that we should see static friction at first, followed by kinetic friction. If we run the code, the crate remains stationary at first because the static friction is exactly canceling the pushing force. Then the crate suddenly breaks free when our pushing force exceeds the maximum static friction force. Now that the crate is moving, it experiences kinetic friction and we're able to accelerate forward. Notice the sudden change in the slope of the velocity graph at the moment the crate breaks free. This sudden change is accompanied by a jump in the value of the net force. This jump occurs because the kinetic friction force is weaker than the maximum static friction force. You have now learned how to model motion under friction using vPython. The activities in the description below will help you explore how friction behaves.